I was born in uh, Hamburg, Altona, and I grew up in Norderstedt, which is a, a smaller town in the north of Hamburg. My parents are from Russia, and we're like a Russian-Jewish family, so I'm, I say I'm like Russian-Jewish-German. And um, I grew up in a musical household, like my, both my parents and my brother are musicians. And so I grew up with piano playing, basically when I was already in the belly of my mother. Music was always very close to me, sometimes even too close. Um, because you have to imagine that music was all the time there. And even like when I was sitting just on the computer, uh, I was in the same room when my mom was practicing a Rachmaninoff concerto. So I, I was like, it was just like going into my brain and I also learned how to not listen. <laughs> Uh, at the same time as listening. Um, and words came later. I was always very like, curious about languages and um, I started writing poetry like when I was 15. And since then I just kept uh, writing all the time and also the expression through words was something that uh, came to me and I consider being really my own. There was a time when I stopped uh, studying and playing piano nearly for two years and I wanted to focus on writing and it was part of my journey of finding like my own way and my own expression and when I came back to, to playing again I said to myself I want to do something with literature and I want to do something where words are involved and that's when I really decided to, uh, to apply for a master's in song accompaniment and luckily it worked out and I just like found myself fulfilled with don't having to split my personality into my like my poet self and my musician self but I could be both at the same time one of the main things in my work is to approach the poem and to analyze the poem because what I discover often is that um, although we think we understand poetry easily because this language is not the case, you really have to like, grasp a poem and get every word. That is a very foundational work to have us both on the same path. And then the next step is to understand the music. How did the composer put the poem into music and how are the relation between the voice and the piano? And going from there, then there is the comes what we call interpretation. And then you can make your choices, but they're based upon the piece. Most of times I see the accompaniment or the, the piano music as a, as a psychological side of the same person. So basically we are two performers that deal with the same personality, um, just two different sides. It can happen in songs when someone says something but the music says something contradictory to it. It's like when I can say something to you but mean something different. And this is how it is also, like it, it just deepens deepens the thought of the, of the person that is ex expressing on another level, which is music. What I find extraordinary in the piano part in the, uh, of Schubert songs is the harmonic language. For instance, in this song, Nur wer die Sehnsucht kennt, even in the beginning, you have just, it says, only this person that knows longing knows what I suffer. It's just this one note that is out of the harmony, this. 
that is just so painful. And it's, it's, it's to the word Sehnsucht. She's suffering from the sickness of longing and const a constant feeling of not being in the right place. And it's so expressed in the music. And then there's this part when she says, es schwindelt mir, es brennt mein Eingeweide, which means like, um, I'm, I have a vertigo, uh, my inners is, are burning, and then it just comes to, th to this like very expressive You can really hear like someone is so tormented and suffering and it's just like in the music that's what I meant to you earlier with the with the different layers it just like supports the expression of the singer and even without having the words to it without having the singer to it you can still like feel and embody it and me as a pianist if I imagine the state of being I'm, I'm much more able to to express that in, in my piano playing and I try, to, I try to do this always and to talk with singers about it or vice versa and to just search for this. What is, how, have I ever experienced in my own life something where I felt so much pain that I felt that no one else can understand it? And yes, I did. So I will put this into this song. Going back to Schubert, uh, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, remarks from friends that um, they know that he was reading out the poetry loud and he was a poem lover so so to say and that should be never be forgotten then it, that it comes from the poetry that the poetry is basically on the the core of, of art song also of course the poetic language of the time like we understand it differently today we speak a different language however in the moment that we're sitting in a music hall and perform a certain song, the music is created in that moment. That is maybe the magic of, of what we do, that we can relate to someone who has written something 200 years ago and make it alive now. But on the other hand, this is why contemporary music is so important because it can bring something into the music that none of the experience that we have here has, um, has its place. Like, we live in such a different world and therefore it's also so important to, to um, encourage poets and composers to write songs today that we can also perform and same for, for concert places that we can have a place where those newly songs can be performed. Man cries on roof. Body in the window. Heart under the pillow. Head on the street.
I've lost you like a photo. I love reciting, I love speaking a poem and I, I think that poems are also uh, somehow made to be read out loud and um, and maybe art song is a prolongation of this. Even maybe a more interesting thought is to, to go back to like to, uh, to the antique Greece uh, where poetry was always oral like something that you would speak or even sung and always to, to a lyra to this old instrument uh, like the, li the lyre um, so th those were the poets. So I think art song in, in the essence is, is that, only that the lyre is becoming a very big uh, instrument. And even the, the, the logo of Steinway and Sons is a lyre. So uh, that's, I don't know, I, I like to think about it this way. And that's why I say that it's also very important that we as uh, people that play art song or maybe also create we deal with the contemporary poets, uh, so the poetry of our time, and uh, find a way of to include that into the music world. That will be my final word.